This guide shows you what to do if you're running out of space on your Fire TV stick. Now, you're going to need a couple of things first of all. You're going to need, first things first, is one of these, which is a USB pen drive. The second thing you're going to need is a OTG cable. So uh, you can get these from Amazon or from eBay, pretty cheap, couple of quid, couple of dollars. And uh, the actual memory stick you can get again for a couple of quid, couple of dollars from um, Amazon. Uh, get the largest you can afford. This one's only a four gigabyte stick, but uh, you can get sort of up to 256, I think, at the moment, maybe even more. But it obviously depends on how much space you need and how much money you've got. So what you need to do is you need to turn your Fire TV stick off, unplug it from the mains, so and then unplug it from the back of your TV. Okay, here's mine. And what you're going to need to do, first of all, is unplug the power cable from the stick. Okay, and then grab your OTG cable. And you'll find there's three ends on the OTG cable. One fat one and two thin ones. One male, one female on the thin side. And what you're going to need to do is, in the female socket just there, you're going to need to plug your power cable that you just took out of your fire stick into there like so okay then and then grab the other small socket the male socket here and you're going to need to plug that into your fire tv stick there we go that's plugged in there then lastly grab the fat cable and grab your usb pen drive okay and plug that into there like so Okay then, and now you're going to need to uh, plug the Fire TV stick into the back of the TV again, and then once it's plugged in, plug it back into the mains. I'm going to pause this video while I do that. Okay, so my Fire stick has powered up, I've plugged it all in, and uh, what I need to do first of all is uh, I just need to go to settings up here, okay, and then down and across to my Fire TV and we need to go down to developer options and we need to make sure that ADB debugging is switched on and apps from unknown sources is also switched on. So just press the middle button, make sure those are, are turned on, okay, and then press the home button on the remote control. So we need to ensure that we've got Downloader installed. If you haven't got this installed, then please see my video. There should be a link on screen now to it showing you how to get it. So once you've installed Downloader, then we need to download and install a program called Remote ADB. So uh, go into Downloader, okay? And here from the main menu, we need to type tiny.cc forward slash rem a d b then we press the play pause button on the remote control and it should then bring us to this page here so we need to try and move this red circle down to here where it says click here so Let's just move it down to there. Get it as close as you can to click here. It doesn't have to be right on it, but part of it needs to be over it. And then press the middle button on the remote control. OK, it should now download. And uh, once it's ready to install, you should see a screen like this. Now, keep pressing the down button and then press the right button so that install is highlighted. Then press the middle button. OK, it's now installed, so press the middle button on the remote control, and then we need to press the right button on the remote control so that delete is highlighted. Press the middle button, then press the left button so that delete is highlighted, and again, press the middle button. That's OK, that's only the install file. Now it's installed, we don't need it anymore. Um, so let's just I'm just going to press the, 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 the left-hand button until home is highlighted and then press the middle button this gets us back to the uh, the main home screen okay and then we press the picture of the house on the remote control to go to the main home screen right so the next thing we need to do is we need to get our IP address so if you move across to settings just up the top there and then press the down 
button and then go across to MiFi TV, press the middle button and then go to about and then down to network. And there we go, it gives you our IP address just there. So as you can see, it's my one is 192.168.10.202. Yours will be different. It's very unlikely that yours will be the same. Please make a note of this. You're going to need this in a moment. So I'm just going to write that down right now. OK, and then we press the home button on the remote control and keep it held down until this menu appears and then press the middle button on the remote control. And then we need to go down. We need to find this icon just here. Once we found it, press the middle button, OK, and delete out whatever's in this box at the top here, if there is anything in there, OK. And then we type our IP address. So like I say, mine was 192.168.10.202. Yours will be different. So whatever yours said, put it in here, because if you just copy me, it ain't going to work. Right, so press the play pause button once you've done that. Make sure this says 5555. If it doesn't, then put that in there. If it does, press the play pause button. OK, and then press the down button a couple of times on the remote, then press the middle button to collect, connect. It will now say allow USB debugging. So press the middle button to put a tick in this always allow from this computer. Then press the down button so that OK is highlighted. Then press the middle button on the remote control. And if all is well, you should have this Mantis prompt come up on the screen. So now we need to start typing in some commands. So what we need to do is we need to press the middle button on the remote control and we type in there SM space list minus disks. And then once you've typed that in, so that's SM space list minus disks. Once you've done that, press the play pause button on the remote control. OK, then press the back button on the remote control so you can see the screen. And you need to write down whatever is up here. Mine says disk 8 comma 0. Now, if yours says something different, then um, please make sure you make a note of this because you're going to need to write, you're going to need to type this in again in a moment, whatever it says. And if you just simply copy me, if yours says something different in there, then you could destroy your Fire TV stick. So uh, you want to make sure that uh, you write that down. So mine says disk colon eight comma zero. Write down whatever yours says on that second line just there. If it says something different. Okay, so what we next need to do is we need to what they call partition the, uh, the drive. So press the down button on the remote control until you get a cursor flashing just down there in the bottom left hand corner of the screen once you've got a cursor press the middle button on the remote control okay and we need to type in there sm space partition space disk colon now you need to type in like i say whatever is on that second line there here mine says eight comma zero Yours might differ if it does type in whatever's up there. So I'm typing in 8 comma 0. OK, and then space private. OK, so double check, triple check this is correct. Because again, like I say, if you do it wrong, then you could screw up your Fire TV stick and might end up having to buy a whole new stick. What you put in there should be the same as what's there on your screen. Mine says disk colon 8 comma 0. Yours might be different. If yours is different, type in whatever's different in there instead. OK. If you're not too sure about this, press previous, abort now. OK. But uh, OK, so if you're confident in what you're doing and uh, it's all OK, press the play pause button on your remote control. OK, and then press the back button on the remote control. And if all is well, then you shouldn't have any messages come up below what you've just typed in. That should uh, should now be uh, all OK. 
Okay, so we're gonna come out of this now. So uh, let's just keep pressing the back button until we go back to the main screen. And there we go, we're back at the main screen. So what I'm going to do now is, I mean, it won't automatically copy all of your apps over to the, uh, the, the USB stick. Some apps are designed to go on the internal memory. If the person who programmed that app designed it to go onto the internal memory, then it's not going to install on the USB. There is a way that you can manually move it across, but it's quite involved, and I'm not going to go through that in this video. Um, so uh, we'll just uh, we'll just show you. I'm just going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove an app, and then I'll reinstall it again, and uh, we'll see if it installs onto the, uh, the the memory stick. Now, if you want to check, so if we just go across to settings and then down and then across to applications, press the middle button and go down to manage installed applications. Okay. Now, all of these are installed on the internal memory. Now I can tell that because um, there's no little, uh, there's, 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 there's no um, sort of icon beside there, which tells me that uh, it's installed on the uh, USB stick. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna download an app. Let's try that and see what happens. Okay, so what I've just done is I've just installed the Puffin TV browser. And as you can see there, there we go. There's a little uh, USB symbol just there that indicates that it's installed on the usb so if you do want to move anything across to the usb probably the easiest thing to do is to remove it and then reinstall it okay but please bear in mind there's some programs a few of them in actual fact that will not allow you to install onto the usb this is by design from the programmer there's no way to tell before you've tried to install it whether or not it will install onto the USB stick or not. It's just really trial and error. Okay, hope this guide helps. Thanks for watching. You can follow me on Twitter at CWTech. That's at CWTech on Twitter. And don't forget to check out my other videos in my YouTube channel. Just Google Chris Waite YouTube. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for your support.